LeBron and the Lakers, they snag the last semifinal spot after a controversial timeout <laughs> in the 106-103 win over the Suns. We have the clips, but Tass, I mean, this is what everybody's talking about. Is that what uh, we want to start with? Sure, let me set the scene. Lakers up two, <laughs> 11 seconds to go. Suns need a steal or an intentional foul. LeBron gets the ball into Austin Reeves. He's hounded. He's bumped a little bit by Devin Booker. He gets sort of trapped by Kevin Durant. The ball, it squirts loose, and you see LeBron sort of at the top of your screen there. He is calling for the timeout, and the officials grant it to him, but everybody's all in up in arms because, hey, hold on. That was a loose ball. Did anybody actually have the ball? Did Reeves really have the ball for mm-hmm. LeBron to call that timeout? Thoughts? <laughs> well, I, I first... The Suns should have played better if they wanted to win. Yeah. That, that was Big the problem. Facts. This was a strange, strange IST game. The Lakers said, okay, you guys shoot 75 times. Um, no, no, we shoot 75 times. You guys shoot uh, 100 times. We'll still beat you. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. 100 times. We got, we'll, we'll, we'll shoot 100. You shoot 75. You guys turned it over a lot. We'll take care of that. They, you guys hit more threes. We'll take care of that. They just got second chance points after second chance points in this game. And Austin Reeves hit that big three mm-hmm. right before there. And then it was a two-point game. And it was a two-point game. And, yes, that is controversial. Was he calling – was the whole team calling timeout when Austin had the ball? I guess not. It was really close. Was he fouled? I guess not. It was the wrong call. It was just the wrong call at a wrong time, really. We'll probably find out about the last two-minute report. I assume they're going to say it should have been a foul on Booker. Definitely should have been. Yeah, because he does hit him there from behind. Yeah. And then, yeah, it'll be interesting how they address the actual timeout called because was that thing loose while LeBron is trying? And you've seen probably the clips. People have synced up the TNT <laughs> overtime cameras, and maybe LeBron is calling it a little bit more earlier than you sort of see at first. Uh, you know, They're trying to say he has it pinned to his leg still, I think is what the, uh, That's what the, the official said after the game to the pool Kevin. reporters. Yeah. Your, your thoughts on this? You know, again, this controversial play here. It looked like the ball was loose when the timeout was called. I think if you go back and slow it down, we don't have uh, the benefit of the green pants guy taking the video so that we can actually see when Reeves has the ball trapped on his leg. LeBron catches it or starts calling for a timeout at like 8.4 seconds, but they don't give him the timeout until 7.4 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, But... I kind of think it's turnabout is fair play here because it should have been a foul on Booker. He comes over to foul Austin Reeves. They don't call it, so then he goes into a trap. They get really? the steal. I thought he kind of just held up for a second. He bumped him. There's no doubt. Yeah, that's the foul part. Yeah, but he was kind of just standing there. That was the weird thing. I don't think he actually fouled. So you don't think they'll they'll say that in the last two-minute report, which probably drops in <laughs> during the show here? <laughs> they will probably just to sell it a little bit. He did bump him, but I don't think he actually went up there to foul because they wanted the ball mm-hmm. real bad. Well, they were going to have to it. foul or, yeah, obviously cough yeah. up the steal. Yeah. Uh, Vogel was pissed. He's yep. like, uh, of course. He's like, it's a loose ball. You can't call a timeout during a loose ball. The whistle blows. I don't know why. Everything in the league is reviewable. I don't know why they can't be reviewable. We got the trap. We got the turnover. And the damn whistle blows. <laughs> it's just frustrating. Of course, he's going to be frustrated. But to, to speak to what you were saying there, Tass, Kevin Durant was like, who cares about that? We played like shit. <laughs> like, you know, him and Booker turned the ball over a combined 12 times. As a team, they had 22 turnovers, which led to 25 Lakers points. So that sloppiness, right from, right from uh, the first quarter, they had 10 turnovers. It was amazing they were even in this game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, that one play, sure, that sucks. They got the short end of the whistle there. Um, but play better and you probably get this victory. Hold on to the ball five more times and you probably get the victory. Yeah, exactly. 22 turnovers, and then they allowed 22 offensive rebounds. So like Tass is saying, 25 extra shots, basically, for the Lakers. Mm -hmm. When you're playing a game that ends up being uh, a three-point victory, 25 extra attempts really comes through. Uh, And that's why the Lakers won, and that's why Kevin Durant said afterwards, yeah, we might have got screwed, but what really screwed us was botching it for the first 47 and a half minutes of the game. Yeah, and he had a great night shooting the ball. It was surprising because the Lakers do have now with everybody sort of healthy and ready to go. They were throwing big bodies at him. They're throwing Vanderbilt at him, him, and he is a a huge man. But for him to shoot 12-17, Book just didn't look right out there. Uh, Those two guys, they turned it over a ton uh, combined. 
But the Lakers, yeah, just throwing bodies and bodies and bodies. I thought Cam Reddish was was pretty good on Booker throughout the second, third, and fourth quarter. Pretty good at slapping him in the face. Yeah, they hated each. They wanted to. I, mean, I know Booker wanted to fight him real bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because he, he kept getting hit in the face. Yeah. Cam Reddish, I agree, he was uh, pretty good against Devin Booker because he was playing really, really physical and getting away with a lot. You know, it's uh, the IST. Yeah. They were letting things go. I, I yeah. loved how the Lakers actually played that game with all these sort of now that everybody's back healthy, or for the most part, everybody is. Yeah, these defensive minded wings they played up and physical and like put the pressure on these guys that led to a lot of these turnovers and uh you know they feel good with ad behind them and that the suns aren't going to kill them sort of uh at the rim yeah with all these guys back they their energy and just athleticism it, it helps you know what you want to pair those type of guys around a lebron and ad and i thought you know right from the jump in this game they came out with the energy and maybe it was the playoff atmosphere of the ist that they allowed them to be a little more physical. I think mm-hmm. there's some truth to that. And they had so many second chance points because they were on the offensive glass. They were just getting after it. And they would have had way more if Anthony Davis could have some clean putbacks. But <laughs> yeah. he yeah. could not. So it's just, it's just weird that in this game, the Suns have more threes. They shot way better. How the Lakers shoot 37% and still win this yeah. game. The numbers all say... The Sun should win this game, but somehow the Lakers were just scrappy. They got the scrappiness back. All those, all those dudes, they got to get bigger. That's that's an issue. They just they just need to play somebody big as well. Because I know Anthony Davis is always playing five. He did a good job, but how did he miss putbacks? Was, <laughs> Still was, finished with a great line. Yeah, he was yeah. exhausted. I thought he <laughs> carried in the first half. Twenty points, eight for sixteen. Second half, six offensive rebounds. Like you're saying, he just could not make the putbacks. Still scored seven points, but went two for ten. The thing is, he played out. Outplayed Nurkic in both halves, anyways, so it didn't matter. Yeah. A seven-point half for Anthony Davis last night was the equivalent to what Nurkic did the entire night, and Nurkic was getting dragged into every single pick and roll yeah. down the stretch. It was like LeBron <laughs> just wanted to score on him every time, so he basically did. Scored 15 uh, of the Lakers' first 19 in the fourth quarter, assisted on the other four. So after Reeves carried in the third quarter, you know the Lakers looked at who they were playing. And they said, "Okay, we're either going to score on Nurkic or Grayson Allen." And yep. that's going to be the problem for the Suns. Yep. They're going to have to play at least one of those guys. You know, maybe uh, Grayson Allen takes a seat once Bradley Beal is actually healthy. But they're going to have a couple of targetable defenders out there almost all the time. And you've been calling it for about a month now, I guess, since the start of the in-season tournament, Tass. You're like, LeBron, he wants to go to Vegas. This <laughs> guy is headed there. Uh, again, got a little help maybe from the officials last night at the end with the timeout uh, warranted to him. But um here he goes. Lakers will be playing, obviously, in the second game on Thursday night in the semifinal matchup. Uh, but he really took over. I mean, Trey's right. Like, this guy, I know I know. Reggie's always saying, appreciate greatness. We got to appreciate it. And all we hear about all the time is, you know, this is pretty amazing. We shouldn't, like, gloss over it that the guy is turning 39 at the end of the month and is still a top 10 player easily in the league and just completely takes over games. It's pretty nuts to think about. I mean... Yeah. I mean, I know I do it. I'm guilty. I'm like, this guy's in year 21. He's still one of the best. I know people wondering if he's a little too old. So I think that's why he made that basket. And then he said, I'm back. I'm pretty sure he said, I'm back. I haven't been reading mouths lately all that well. But he <laughs> said, I'm back. You know, three minutes left in this game. And whether or not he plays in the finals in Vegas doesn't really matter to him because he can go see his son play if he does play on Sunday. That's right. Son, Bronny, was in the crowd. He wasn't jumping around or anything. He was just, he was just there. I like how the camera person going to, to Bronny James. Uh, and, yeah, he got the job done in the fourth quarter as being the guy. Uh, he, he did play incredibly well throughout the entire game. And to be on the offensive glass, like, he had three offensive boards. He had 11 assists. He was... He was brought. Played 40 minutes, didn't he, too? I mean, <laughs> he almost had a 5x5. Five five. Wanted to win this game, no doubt. 4x5. 4x5, uh, five. Uh, four five. there you go. Yeah. Uh, Zilla wrote in his newsletter Steals, this morning. yeah. We're more than a decade past the first LeBron versus KD best player in the world debates. We're a decade past that. And while maybe neither of them are there at the top anymore, they're pretty still, they're, they're freaking close is what uh, Ziller points out. And that, that is, that's amazing. It's true. Like these two are going head to head a decade after we're debating who's the best player in the world. And they're still in the conversation. It's yeah. Awesome. I kind of, I just hadn't really thought about it that, LeBron won his first title playing against Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant won his first title playing against LeBron. 
Like they've been mm-hmm. the two be- two of the best players in the league for like your sand skeets. Yeah. Literally a decade at this point. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I guess we're just gonna have to wait till their careers are over to really remember all of the things they've done against each other. Uh. And we also had that huge break where they just didn't play each other because yeah. of injuries and COVID and all that kind of stuff. Uh, any other thoughts on uh, this Lakers victory here and moving on? Yeah, that record of Braun versus Kevin Durant in the regular season, how Braun has won most of those games but hasn't won all the playoff games, is 5-9. Five, five wins, nine losses in the playoffs because the Golden oh, State c- yeah. <laughs> scenario, but has been kicking ass during the regular season. What is he, 18-6? and six? LeBron now against him in the regular season? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 18 wins, six losses. It's, a, it's a strange one. That's a strange one. Any other notes, TK? Um, I mean, Austin Reeves was awesome last night. He really carried, I thought, in the third quarter, 13 points, yeah. five of seven from the field, two of those threes. Then he hit that big three with 15 seconds left, basically another I'm him type of moment. Yeah. Really, really uh, celebrating that one. The Lakers really only got good performances from LeBron, AD, and Austin Reeves. Everybody else was in single digits. Nobody else shot over 50%. I guess Max Pr- Christie was one for two. He had a three that was actually pretty important, I thought. But uh, that seems to be the recipe for the Lakers, and they're really settling on it now as we play defense. That's how they won the championship a few seasons ago. Mm -hmm. And then we get good performances from LeBron, hopefully AD, and hopefully Reeves as well. Him moving to the bench has been helpful, but they get nothing from Reddish and Prince. So I don't know how long Reeves will stick on the bench. Uh, I think ideally they would like him being able to start and play alongside those guys because he's rounded into form after a slow start. But he'll clearly play the fourth quarter no matter what, if he comes off the bench or not, over D'Angelo Russell because he does play defense. And to go along with... Some long dudes, obviously, in Brun and, and Anthony Davis and Cam Reddish, who, yeah, couldn't hit a shot. He was over, but I thought his minutes were important in getting in Booker's face over and over and over again. And his his growth has happened. You know, since he was here in Atlanta, he it seemed like he was going to be a good player. He played Chris Middleton pretty well in that playoff series. That's his only playoff series. And then things went downhill. Mm-hmm. Got traded to the Knicks, traded uh, to Portland, and now with the Lakers, it seems like the Brun effect is going to work out there. But I would like to see Booker talk about Cam Reddish and how he would like to fight him. I mean, why, why didn't that why didn't that come up post game? Because uh, Booker was frustrated, yeah. uh, obviously, because he did get hit yeah. a lot, and, and he had a very poor game. Yeah, turning the ball over and not shooting all that well uh, for Devin Booker, at least. 